Why do American announcers get crap for mispronouncing names, but nobody cares that British announcers can't pronounce Pulisic? So the, the, the Christian Pulisic thing is interesting because we made a point, I say we, the American soccer media, when he kind of broke out to, to ask him, what do you want to be called? Uh, you know, and you can actually go uh, to my friend and colleague, Taylor Twelman. He has it actually on video where, where they ask him. And, and so that's why we in the American soccer community call him Christian Pulisic, because that's what he wanted to be called. And look, when you can do that, that's what you that's what you do now the whole the whole game and situation and culture of pronunciations is an evergreen type of topic when it comes to uh announcers and there is a spectrum of ways to ultimately do it you want to be respectful but you also want to be you don't want to be pretentious in the things that in the things that you do and sometimes you know names that if you did it the exact way that it is pronounced in the country of origin, in the culture that it is from, it would sound like a completely different person and name than when you do it uh, on television. So sometimes we Americanize it or uh, Englif Englify is it? I don't know, but we, we make it so that it is palatable to the English speaking ear. I don't think that that necessarily is a bad thing, um, it's, you know, sometimes, and, and, and there's very different ways of doing it. For example, friend uh, uh, Derek Ray, he is adamant and militant about pronunciation. Um, and, you know, he will call the embassies uh, of, the, of the nationalities to make sure that he gets exactly what the pronunciation is. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, you know, someone like John Strong, I think he recognizes that if he were to do that at times he would he would sound a little pretentious and it would take away from the actual call that he that he is doing and so he tends to do it a little differently and by the way this is not a, a judgment on any on anybody that i'm talking about here there's just different ways that of going about doing it to answer your question in the simplest form it's because we're american okay and i know that sounds like um like I'm being overly sensitive and that inferiority complex that I talk about all the time is is uh, is in full is in full effect and to a certain extent it is but that it is coming from what a lot of people around the world don't consider a soccer culture and therefore coming from people that they don't consider credible relative to a soccer culture it is that much easier to criticize or point out or ridicule when somebody from American broadcasting is doing it as opposed to somebody else. Masi, I'm sure you have thoughts on this. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of on the John Strong side of that because I know whenever I'm listening to Tim Vickery, and Tim Tim is very defensive about this, but um, but he, whenever he's speaking in English and he says a Brazilian's name, he then says it in the authentic Portuguese way, you know, like Ronaldinho, Fred, but when you plop that onto an English sentence, it's jarring. It takes me out of what he's talking about. It's just, and, and like, I don't know. I mean, I, I just naturally, when I'm speaking Portuguese, it's Ronaldo. When I'm speaking English, it's Ronaldo. I don't know. I can just sort of adjust just to, to make the sentence kind of flow more naturally. And yeah, Tim Vickery is adamant that, no, I'm going to say it the authentic way no matter what. And Derek Ray feels that way, too. So as you mentioned, there's there's different schools of thought, and I respect all of them. But I have to say, I come down on the John Strong. I mean, when you're calling a game, why would you want to say anything that's going to be sort of jarring to the ears of the viewer? To, you know, a, a sound coming out of your voice that's kind of unnatural. I don't know. Yeah, man. exactly. And, and you know, while you want to be respectful, and if, if, if players give you what they want to be called, you try to do that. But ultimately... In a strange way, it's not even up to the players. The, the, the soccer culture ultimately is going to decide what that person is called. And to your point, I think you do have a responsibility of not bringing people out of the game with an instance where it is jarring. And your ability to tell that story and not to have words or phrases that, you know, that, uh, that peak for the wrong reasons and get people out of the flow and the story that you're telling, I think that I think that it is that is. And you know, whether it's Vickery or Derek Ray, I mean, they they do it and that's part of their performance and it and it's a traditional part of their performance. So it's it doesn't take me out as much. But um and I also think you have to know who you are, who you're speaking to and who you are. And that's different for each and every person. So good question, but ultimately the reason why is because we're American.
and it's just the way that it is. And in time, that'll change. The, the Ronaldo thing is funny because, you know, when, I know from covering these international tournaments, uh, these announcers, they, they, they're very anal about pronouncing like the left back on Slovenia correctly, but then they'll say like Ronaldo. So it's like, you're, you're not worried about the biggest star in the world saying his name authentically correctly, because if you're applying that, that formula to his name, it would be Ronaldo. In Portuguese, the R is pronounced like an H, but but that's okay with the biggest star in the world to anglify it or whatever. But but we're going to quibble over, like I said, the, <laughs> some backup on, you know, Slovenia, but... Well, the big, the biggest one for me that I, I can't fathom and understand, and it does drive me crazy, is if there is a damn accent in the actual name that shows where the emphasis on which syllable it's supposed to be, why wouldn't you use it, okay? Martinez? No. No. The accent's right there showing you, showing you how to say the damn word. Oh, Mossy, don't get me started. Don't get me started. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.